All right. For once in your life, you are going to do the right thing. You're going to put somebody else first for once. John. Did you tell him yet? Counting the minutes, huh? Gee, is that why you sent him over here this morning? Come on, you're the one who said you wanted to come over and talk. All right, you're right. I'm sorry. I don't mean to snap at you. Well, when are you going to tell him you want him to live with me? I don't want him to live with you, John. I just think he would be better off with you. You're changing your mind, aren't you? Karen, yeah. I walked out of here so fast before I left my lunch inside. What's wrong? I remember sitting up in my car. That's it. Let's listen to that again. I remember sitting up in my car. Well, what do you think? <laughs> well, it certainly doesn't take a Rhodes Scholar. If he remembers sitting up in his car, that means he had to be lying down. Exactly, Mom. I think he was asleep in the car when the murderer was here. Oh, no, Tom. Not murderer. Murderess. Unfortunately, I do hate to admit it, but Lucinda Walsh is a female. Mom, do you really think that she did it? Oh, I know she did. Yeah, but she's got an alibi. Darling, I have done a lot of research on this, and I have found an old friend of Lucinda's, somebody who can really bring her down. Now, we are going to use a dog to catch a dog. For all time. Betsy, I meant it when I put that ring on your finger. I meant it. For all time. For all time. Come in. Are you all right? Oh, Russ, are you? I'm so sorry. Hey, come on. No more apologies. It was my fault. I love you. And I wanted you to be my wife, but... I pushed you too hard. Oh, I'm sorry I embarrassed you. It's all right. Anyway, long engagements aren't so terrible. They're probably not a bad idea. Russ, I've been doing a lot of thinking. Yes? Well, I came back here to hide. I've been trying to ignore the fact that I have a past, but I can't do that anymore. I have to find out who I am and what I'm from. All these questions I'll be asking myself the rest of my life unless I find some answers. I don't know what this means. What are you going to do? It means, Russ, that I have to go where the answers are. I've got to go back to Oakdale. Portion brought to you today by Dawn, the dishwashing liquid that takes grease out of your way, and by High Point, the decaffeinated coffee with smooth taste and no bitterness. Steve, hello. I'm glad I caught you home. May I come in? Oh, sure, sure. Come on. Thank you. How you doing? I'm fine. I'm okay. This isn't a social call, though. I come bearing gifts. Oh, oh, oh. Well, uh, you know what they say. It's an old Greek saying. Oh, I know, I know. But I Greeks. don't think that applies to me, see, because I'm only Greek in my former marriage, and that was annulled. Right, right, okay. This is for Danny. Oh. Well, th thank you. That's great. She's going to love this. Well, I didn't know if she had one, but, well, I think it's every child's constitutional right to have a teddy bear, because, well, they scare away the boogeyman. Oh, oh, well. You must have had a million of these. No. No, when I was little, I only had one, and he was very, very special. His name was Herbert. So this is Herbert Jr. Herbert Jr. All right. I bought him for uh, our baby. I hope you don't mind. 
May I give it to her? Sure. Thank you. Hello, Danielle. I would like to make a formal introduction. Yes, this is this is going to be your escort for the next 20 or 30 years. How's that? His name is Herbert Jr. Now, Danielle, there are some very important things you need to know about teddy bears. Look at you need to know that there's no batteries included. Hey. They run just on imagination. And they will, uh... They'll protect you through the night. And you can tell them all of your deepest, darkest secrets. And they'll never tell anybody, no matter how mad they get at you. And they'll be there for you when you cry. And they'll hold you when you get hurt. I kind of have to sort of hold them, I guess. And they'll never, ever leave you. That's the best thing about them. You see, they kind of have people beat all the way around, don't they? I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's, that's beautiful. Well, I couldn't help thinking about our little baby. He was gone before we ever got to know him. I know, I know, I know how you feel. Steve, everybody I love is gone. Please don't leave, too. Don't you go. Oakdale, are you sure you want to do that? There's no telling what you may find out. I know, and, and I'm scared to death. But, but the truth can't be any worse than what I imagine. Betsy, I love you. I hope you believe that. I do. And I'm afraid for you. I just want you to be happy. I just hope that going back will do that for you. Russ, I know that, but I only know that if I stay here, I'd be doing it out of cowardice. And how long could you love me then, knowing that? All my life. I don't believe that. And I don't believe you can build happiness on fear. I mean, even if I do go back there, my absolute worst nightmares are true, that I was some kind of criminal, that I owe for that, and I have to pay for it. I can't avoid taking responsibility for who I was forever. Betsy, don't you think you've already paid? The accident, your operations, your memory loss, what's to be gained by paying even more? There's myself to be gained. My life. As horrible as it may have been, at least it would be mine again. And if they put you in prison? Well, then that would be the first step on the way to making things right again, and maybe they'd give me my baby back. That would make me happy. But you see, my, my happiness isn't just going to fall into my lap. I've got to work for it. And anyway, I, I may have been a criminal, but I'm damn sure I'm not going to be a coward. So I'm going to fight for my happiness because my life depends on it. No, you're not a coward. You're one of the bravest women I've ever known. Betsy... If I could give you some of the answers you're looking for, would, would you stay here? I don't know. What do you mean? Do you remember that woman we met at the restaurant in, in Oakdale, Diana McCall? Yeah. In fact, she was here at the... wedding. Yes. Didn't that strike you as strange? She knew me, didn't she? She knew who I was. That's why she was here. That's right. Well, what did she say about me? She said that... No, I can't. I can't do this. What? What? Russ, tell me, please. I have to know. What did she say? Something wrong? I quit being the parent, would you? Karen has something important. No, I don't. Um, aren't you late? Yeah, I better get going. It, it's important. No. I mean, we'll talk later. All right. I'll see you at lunchtime. I'll pick it up then. All right. Hi. Please don't look at me like that. I don't think I can take it. Not today. You're changing your mind about all of this, aren't you? I don't know. Well, you give me a call when the hell you figure well, out... Well, go ahead. Walk out, John, just like you have every other time I ever needed you. You've never needed me. You never needed me. That's not true. I wish it were. You know, I, I'm about to let Dustin live with you. I'm about to let go of the most important thing in my life. And if I can't talk to you about it, I don't know what I'm going to do. I need you. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. I'm here, then. All right. Why do you make me beg like that? Why Wait do you do minute. that? You just said you needed me. I do, John. 
I hate to admit it, but I do. I love him so much. And I'm afraid to be without him. But you don't have to be. When am I going to see him, John? Every third Friday, holidays? I told you, any time you want. You got to promise me something. Sure what? You got to give him the kind of life he deserves. You got to give him everything that I couldn't give him. And don't let him down. He's too precious to give up for nothing. I will never let him down. I don't want to let either one of you down. Well, then it's settled. I'll tell him today. Uh, Mrs. Walsh. Oh, Murray Henderson. Uh, we had the exterminator this week. Why are you here? Look, I, I know how angry you must be with me. No, I don't think you really do, because I don't think your cowardly heart is capable of understanding a passion of such magnitude. M Mrs. Walsh, I, I didn't want to come here, but, well, I'm desperate. I... Oh, really? Really? I thought it was just another example of your stunning stupidity. You are loathsome. You have many facets, all of them loathsome, and I want you to get out. M Mrs. Walsh, I, I need a job. I think you just did it. You're capable of surprising me. Murray, you think that I'd ever give you a job? Everyone in this town knows that, that I spied on Whit McCall for you, and now the word is out that I'm not to be trusted. And you haven't wondered how the rumor got started? You... you did that? You don't think that you could implicate me in a murder and not feel some little retaliation? Well, now you've ruined me. So now what am I supposed to do? I haven't subtle hints or nothing. I mean, I've got what I have to do? I have to get a neon billboard to tell you that I don't want to see you anymore. I want you out of my sight. I want you out of this town. And if you're smart, you'll disappear. How? How am I supposed to do that? And with what? You did such a good hatchet job that I don't even have enough money to leave town. Oh, with. my heart bleeds. I'll give you some money. I'm on the town board for beautification. It's my civic duty. Well, what about the police? Never mind. What about the police? Well, they said not to leave town. You take my advice. You get out while the getting's good. Because let me tell you, what the police do to you, if you should go, is going to be rather pleasant compared to what I'm going to do to you if you stay. Now listen, you're going to be fine. You're going to be just fine. I guess so. Something I want you to know. What's that? That I'm very proud of you. Really, very proud of you, the way you put Dustin first. Well, thank you, John. That means a lot to me. I underestimate you, and I'm sorry. I apologize. You apologize? <laughs> you learned a new word in New York. <laughs> yeah. I've missed you. I miss you, too. Oh, boy. You know, I... I've been thinking. About what? About you, mostly. I care so much for you. No, I think it's more than that. I'm still in love with you. You are? Yes, I am. I never stopped. Nobody ever made me as happy or as crazy or as... I mean, nobody ever got to me the way you do. And I've been doing a lot of thinking. I... I think we're both being kind of stupid. What do you think? I think you're asking me to marry you again. Yeah, I think I am. I think I am. What would you say to that? I don't know, John. If it didn't work, I don't think I could take that. Well, well, maybe maybe it could work, see? I mean, if we were to find out, really find out what it was that we were doing wrong, and we didn't do that anymore. Oh, I think we both know the problem was Lucinda Walsh. I don't think Lucinda Walsh was the problem. She was the catalyst. What was the problem, John? I don't think I ever gave you the kind of love that you wanted. I don't think I showed you. Give you the reassurances that you'd want. I don't think I ever did. 
Not I want to. I don't know if I could now, but I certainly would like to try. Because I love you. Because I never stop loving you. Would that be enough, you think? Could you take my love on, on faith for a while? Do you think that would be enough? This portion of As the World Turns has been brought to you today by pH Balance Secret. Strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. And by Crisco Oil. For fried foods with no greasy taste and for light tasting salads. We'll continue with part two of As the World Turns in just a moment. Now, part two of As the World Turns. Mrs. McCall. Well, hello, Murray. It's so good to see well, you. What are you doing here? Oh. Well, I just was in the neighborhood, and I thought I ought to drop by and see. I have never come to your place of abode. Now, my mother would just be shocked at my tacky manners for that. Well, come to think of it, though, if my mother knew I had just dropped into a man's apartment, I think she'd be shocked at that, too. Either way you look at it, you could say, Mother would certainly be shocked. <laughs> so, this is your little apartment. Yeah, huh? this is it. Now, oh, look, if well, you'll excuse me, I... So, this is Murray's place. My, my, isn't this something? You've done a very good job. It looks lovely. I'd love to know who your interior decorator is. Uh, Mrs. McCall, I... Isn't this lovely? And you're so inventive, too. And, uh, oh, what in the world is that? Oh, that, that's nothing. It's... Uh... Oh, nothing. It looks like a suitcase to me. Uh, in the process of being packed. You planning to take a little trip? Well, yeah. <laughs> Silly question, isn't it? Of course you're going to take a little trip. Uh, Murray, I don't know very much about these things, but, uh, I... I do believe the police requested that you stay in town, something about being a star witness or something equally glamorous and exciting like that. Uh, don't you think maybe you ought to postpone your trip? I can't. Oh. Oh, this is an obligatory trip. Oh, dear. Something you're not looking forward to, I can tell. Um, I don't mean to pry, but would this by any chance have something to do with that terrible Lucinda Walsh? I can't tell you that. You don't have to. I can tell by your expression that, yes, it most certainly does. Murray, she is a manipulating schemer. That's a good word for her. A manipulating schemer of the worst sort. Yes. Yes, she is that, Mrs. McCall. What has she done to you? Well, for starters, she's made my life in the city a living hell. She's also promised that if I don't get out, she's going to make it worse. Oh. Don't you think it's about time the tables were turned on her? Yeah, I'd like to see that happen. Mm. Well, with your help, I think we could do that. I think it's about time that Viper got what's coming to her, huh? <laughs> you don't tangle with Vipers, Mrs. McCall. You just pack and leave. Oh, that's nonsense. Now, together, together we can do this. What are we going to do? Well, I have a, a little plan. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> do you have... Happen to have any cats around here? Yeah, I do. I, I have a couple of them. I... Oh, well, uh, that is not surprising. Do you think it would be all, all right? <laughs> Could you let those those little darlings go out for their daily outing right now? Yeah. I, I'm so allergic. I... Um, I I could put them out on the fire escape. Would that be all right? Uh, bye. Okay, come on. Stoop. I am really oh, Sunday. Oh, thank you. Oh, aren't you wonderful? You speak uh, bi you're bilingual too. Oh, good. I, that was. So, uh, what's the plan? Oh. Oh, excuse me, just a minute. Oh, well, here it is. Let me... First of all, before we get into that, I do want to make one thing very clear to you. I have the best of intentions of uh, paying you while you stay here in Oakdale because a person just cannot... I mean, just good intentions will not look after soul and body. And I want to keep you out of harm's way and out of Lucinda Walsh's... <coughs> Walsh's as well. Well, so, is that agreeable to you? That's great. Fine. And may I say that it's a pleasure doing business with a lady for a change. <laughs> oh, you're very kind. Now, uh, I think it would be a good idea if we put my little plan into action today. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, thank you. Our baby would have been her brother, huh? Well, her half-brother. Yeah. I'd like so much to be close to her. When I was pregnant, I... Um, what? What? No. What were we going to say? Doesn't make any sense now. But when I was carrying her brother, I was hoping someday she would call me Aunt Diana. Hey. It's silly, isn't it? Oh, it's yeah. not. Do you think she still could? Sure. Well, you're having a little trouble just saying daddy right now, aren't you? That's okay. I could wait. Well, that's no, sure. It's great. It's so nice to be close to her. I can just imagine what it would have been like. Would it be all right if I uh, came by to see her sometime? Sure, that's okay. Thank you. You know, I think I would have been a very good mother. Well, you, you still are going to be a mother. Come on, someday. It won't be the same. That baby was a part of you. But, you know, you said something uh, the other day that helped. Oh, what was that? You said that sometimes, just when we think things are over, they have a way of working out. Well, Danny and I have been through some pretty rough times. And we've both lost people we love. But I think maybe we could help each other through this. Would it be all right if I came over and uh, took care of her sometime? I don't know which one of us it would help the most. Sure. If, if that would be good for you, I, I think it would be wonderful for you and Danny to, to, to build something. I mean, even if, even if Betsy comes back. What? Uh, Steve, I don't understand. Well, I think that Betsy's still alive. Russ, please tell me, what did you say? Maybe sometime. No, now, Russ, now. I want to know, what did you say? I see you're upset now. Russ, you can't avoid from telling me the truth. If my instincts about this woman are correct, I have a feeling she won't be so noble. I'm going to go talk to this Diana McCall. Betsy, you can't go, please. Just give me a minute. I'll, I'll tell you everything. Right. I'm waiting. First of all, you're wrong about Diana McCall. She's on your side. She uh, saw how happy you were here and agreed not to go to the police. So they are after me. Yes, and it's worse than what we found out before. What, what, what do you mean? What did she say? She said that you've committed crimes in several states. What did I do? Apparently, it's grand theft. In several states? Your husband, this, this Michael Christopher, got you involved. Apparently, he'd been into that kind of thing from an early age. What about my baby? What did she say about my she daughter? She said your baby is doing fine. Well, where is she? Who's taking care she of her? She verified that she'd been placed with foster parents who love her very much. She's a very happy child. Well, what about the accident? Where was I going? How she did I... didn't know. Oh, my God. Oh, Russ, what you must think of me. I don't think anything like that. I love you. No, Russ, please. Leave me alone. I'm going to be by myself. Oh, my God. What have I done? I love you, John. Then let's do it. I need to know a few things first. Oh, now, wait a minute. We can't bargain about this thing now. I care for you. What we had was so wonderful, it's worth another shot. You care for me? Losing ground already. A minute ago, you loved me. I tell you what. We'll hire some uh, leftover judges from the Olympics, and they can grade our love each day in 8-5, uh, I don't want Lucinda uh... Walsh to be a part of my life. Or yours. Honey, she's my boss. She, is, she doesn't own you. She gave you a medical grant. You do your job. She has no other claim on you. Well, it's not as simple as that. You see, she has the power to cancel or renew the grant. If she expects you to spend time with her, then maybe you should cancel it. Maybe it'll be better that way. Wait a minute. This grant makes it possible for me to do the kind of work I've always wanted to do all my life. And if I have to... Favor 
Lucinda, then I guess I have. Favor her, John? Well, you spend all your time with her. You don't have to kiss her feet. You do very good work for her. I, I'm not kissing her feet. It's not... All right, it is not just politics. I do admire her. I admire her style, her money, her power. And, uh, and I will continue to favor her this way, I guess, yes. Well, then you run with who you want, and I'll run with who I want. And when you're out with Lucinda, you'll find me at the racetrack with Jay Connors. Oh, now, wait a minute. No, no, I don't mean that. Why no. not? I like him. I like his style. I like his money, the fact that he doesn't have any of it. I like his power. Oh, yeah, and we all know you've checked that out, haven't you? What do you say? You want to give it another try? I love you for asking me that. What do you say? It wouldn't work. We can't live together. We'd hurt each other, and we would hurt Dustin all over again. But I love you, John. I'll love you till the day I die. Bless you. Bless you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, nothing to worry about. Just a little cat fever, oh. that's all. Oh, well, 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 well. I am so excited to say that I have Murray in my hip pocket. Well, don't you look pleased with yourself. Now, how did you get him to switch allegiance from Lucinda to you? Oh, darling, it was so simple. Mm -hmm. You just would be surprised at how much, uh, how much you can gain with uh, just a little charm. Uh, well, that is, a little charm and a lot of money. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, anyway. Uh, now, Mary and I are ready to begin phase two. Now, look, Mom, I don't think you should deal with him. He can't be trusted. Trusted? I don't trust him. I, I trust him about as far as I could throw him. Oh, look, I know he's so wit down the river for just a few dollars. He would do the same thing to me, not even think twice about it. But that's why I've got to do my little scheme today. It must be executed today before he has a chance to change his mind about it. Yeah, but what are you going to do? Well, just... Uh, oh, oh, darling. Ryan, claim as soon as I got your message. I know. I knew you'd do that. Oh, you are something else. You're one of the lights of my life. <laughs> Is she all right? It's all right. She saw Gone with the Wind last night. She'll recover very soon, I'm sure. Oh. Your message said it was important. Yes, it is. I, I need you to do something for me. Uh, it's, it's very important. I want you to arrange a leak at the Argus for me uh, and make it look like a mistake. Can you do that? What, what kind of a leak? What do you mean? Well, uh, I want... Well, you know Murray Henderson. He is nothing but a two-faced traitor. He's now working for me. And I want Lucinda Walsh to find out about it. But I want her to think that we don't know she knows. I see. Well, if you can figure that one out, I'm going to get you a part-time job deciphering the Dead Sea Scrolls. Oh, hush. Now, uh, how are you going to go about it? It shouldn't be too difficult. I have an employee who I suspect is working for the City Times anyway. I'll just plan it with him. Lucinda should know about it within an hour. Oh, that's great. Oh, I'm so lucky. I'm just surrounded by genius. <laughs> well? Oh, if I didn't despise Lucinda so much, I would feel so sorry for her now. She doesn't stand a snowball's chance in... Mom? A snowball's chance in Houston. <clears throat> oh, Miss Juliet, uh, your uncle doesn't want to be disturbed. He's on a, an important overseas phone call. Oh, Simon, I, I won't disturb him. I'll just go wait inside until he's through with the phone call. Now, would you mind waiting here? The, uh, the conversation is, is private. All right, Simon. Thank you, Miss. How am I supposed to feel? Like my world just falling apart. Betsy, I'm sorry. No, no, don't be. 
I asked you to tell me the truth, and you gave it to me. I should say thank you. I brought you a sedative. What for? Well, you said you hadn't been sleeping, and I know your blood pressure's up. I'm sure after what I told you today, it's gone sky high. Russ, I don't need a tranquilizer. Please, don't baby me. I'm not babying you. I'm your doctor. Just so we keep the labels straight, you're my patient. This is a prescription. Now, take it. No. Now, Russ, I have to have a clear mind to decide what I'm going to do here. I can't just sleep it off. Now, I may not like being a criminal, but if that's what I am, I've got to decide what I could do about it. Will you take these, please? No! Didn't you hear me? Miss Julia. Oh, Simon, you startled me. I was just checking uh, to see that my uncle was off the phone. Excuse me. Miss Julia, Miss Julia, I told you he didn't want to be disturbed. That's all right, Simon. Well, Raymond, I'm sorry to barge in like this. Um, I just thought you'd like to know. I've changed my mind about Amsterdam. I've decided to compete in the, com the Queen's Cup competition after all. Oh, really? Why the change of heart? Well, I thought you'd be pleased. Isn't that what you wanted? Well, of course. But the last time we spoke, if you'll pardon the euphemism, you were determined not to compete. <laughs> Who was it that used to tell me that artists owe it to the world to be capricious if only because it's what the world expects? Yeah, of them. I remember saying something like that. Only I think I used the word captivating instead of capricious. Oh, was it? Well, I was never good with those old sayings. Actually, it was Madame Renievskaya who changed my mind. Madame Renievskaya? Have you spoken with her? Well, yes, I called her. You were so disappointed in me when I told you I wasn't going to compete. And I thought she m might help me. What did she say? Well, we spoke of a lot of things. But what really changed my mind was when she told me about the time that she competed and what it meant to her afterwards. It kind of put things back in perspective. She also told me that the fear of failing was far worse than failing itself. Is that why you didn't want to compete? Because you were afraid? Oh, Uncle Raymond, you know as well as I am, not in competition shape. Or the trouble I was having with, with Brian. But now I'm ready to get back to work. I don't want to disgrace you. You would never disgrace me, Julia. You're going to play beautifully. I hope so. Well, thank you for listening. <laughs> Simon. What was all that about? Well, you heard her. She wants to compete. Isn't that what we want? She's too glib. We're dealing with a very devious young woman there. Now, wait a minute, Simon. You're discussing my niece. Don't question her honesty. I caught her listening on the extension. I hope your conversation was discreet. I don't like your attitude, Simon. She'd never listen on an extension. I suggest that you go back to playing your role as my faithful servant and leave my niece to me. You talk to her in that tone of voice as you were before, She's going to wonder why I put up with it. You don't want to blow your cover, do you? I'm concentrating on the important thing, the mission at hand. I'd advise you to do the same, sir. Ha! Stevens, I trust you're talking on a secure phone. You're not talking from your office of the Argus. Of course, I have something for you. <laughs> Great. What is it? Lisa McCall has gotten to your friend Murray. What? Are you sure? Yes, of course. He's working for her now. There's no question about it. But we had a deal that he was going to get out of town today. Tell me... Uh, this information, how have you substantiated it? It came from Brian McCall himself. Great. Okay. Thank you, you'll be well paid. <sighs> Hello, Albert. 
this is Mrs. Walsh. And I want you to get a good investigator out, and I want him to find out where Murray Henderson is. Yes, and I want the information yesterday. It's gonna be home any minute. I'm gonna be alone again. You don't have to be, you know. Mm, yes, I do. For a while, anyway. I don't know why it scares me so much. I spent most of my life that way. But then I guess when you touch something so sweet... I loved our family, John. Oh, don't... I'm home. What's for lunch? No, I want to do this alone. Mm -hmm. You wait around here for a couple minutes, okay? Okay, I will. Guys, what's going on here? I love you. Where are you going, John? I'm not going anywhere. I'm waiting over here. What is he talking about? Are you all right? Hey, I'm better than all right. Congratulate me, Dustin. One of my dreams came true today. All right. Congratulations. Which one? <laughs> well, I got a call from Stanford University, and they have offered me a fellowship for my last year of law school. Congratulations, John. That is great. Fellowship to Stanford University. Big stuff. Pretty big stuff. Stanford University. That's, uh, Chicago, right? No, it's California. California? Yeah. Uh, California's pretty far away from here. A couple of thousand miles. Well, that's great. She's always wanted to check out California. And now I won't have to worry about what I'm going to do with Max, right? I mean, I've been thinking, how am I going to pay for him? You know, he's a big horse, eats a lot of food. So now I could just, um, give him the lily. She sure loves him. Well, you don't understand. You're not going. What do you mean I'm not going? Who's going to take care of you out there? I don't know. Guess I'm going to take care of myself. What are you talking about, Carol? I can't let you run off to California. You need me there. Well, you got that right. Well, you see, sweetie, the thing of it is... is that they're offering me student housing on campus, and uh, it's all I can afford. Besides, you don't want to go to California. You got Big Max here and John and all your friends. This is your home. My home's with you, Karen. My whole family. Oh, I love you and I am your family and don't forget it, okay? But you can't go. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll turn the offer down, all right? That's what you want, I will. I'll turn it down. What? Can't let you t turn down the offer of a lifetime. <laughs> I had a feeling you'd say that. So, you're gonna live with John in the penthouse? And you're gonna take care of him, right? Because he really needs you maybe as much as I do. I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you, too. <laughs> Don't you forget how much I love you, okay? I could stand anything but that. No, I won't forget it. <sighs> I'd do anything for you, Karen. Oh, <laughs> I think I'd do just about anything for you, too. <sighs> hey, John. Dustin knows about Stanford and... And, uh, he knows he's gonna be living with you. Isn't that great, John? Karen's got a fellowship to Stanford. I think it is. <laughs> well... Look at you two, huh? Boy, for a while there I had the two best men in the world. I don't suppose I'll ever be so lucky again. Hey! Oh, 
Bless I'm you. so sorry. Oh, now, Lucinda's going to be here any minute. Now, you know, Murray, you know what you're suppo supposed to do. To do. <laughs> yeah, bless oh. you. Simon, I went bought some uh, tissues. Oh, wonderful. How kind. <laughs> oh, thank you. I don't know what. There must still be some cat dander around here somewhere. <laughs> I don't bless understand. You. Oh, oh there she right. is. Oh, oh, get me out of here. Okay. Oh, God bless me. Mrs. Walsh. Come on in. Murray, I'm just so surprised to find you still here. You and I had an agreement that you were going to leave town today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I made a different agreement. A new agreement with Lisa McCall. Oh, really? Well, and what does Mrs. McCall want you to do for her? Well, she wants me to help her find out who murdered her husband. Who <laughs> qualified? I'm surprised she doesn't suspect you. <laughs> Actually, she suspects you. Oh, okay. Doesn't she know that I have an alibi? That I was working with Beverly that night? Now, I wouldn't laugh too loudly if I were you. You see, we both know that you weren't with Beverly. However, I happen to know who Beverly actually was with. be alive it's just a feeling I have that's all I can't prove it but I just know it I see so um you haven't actually heard anything Steve I have to talk to you hello Juliet nice to see you again Diana I'm really sorry about this uh, if you wouldn't mind I really have to speak to Steve it's important no no of course not Steve, thank you so much sure, for today. Sure, 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 sure. May I come back and see Danny again soon? Yeah, whenever you like, huh? And thanks a lot for the present. Goodbye, Juliet. Bye. What's the matter? You look like you just saw a ghost. Steve, our father is alive. He's alive. Michael Christopher is going to be in Amsterdam. This portion of As the World Turns has been brought to you today by Downy, the fabric softener that combines skin-loving softness with the airy April freshness you love. And by Folgers Crystals. Enjoy rich, delicious Folgers Crystals. Stay tuned for Capital, next on most of these CBS stations. Dresses by J. H. Paul Limited. Men's Fashions by Barney's New York. Join us tomorrow for As the World Turns.